greetings all. In this video I shall be using some parts which I've been itching to put together for a little while by making myself a Primaris Ancient for my Celestial Lions. And with Games Workshop releasing a nice new Ancient that's armed with a sword, it's given me the opportunity to use those parts. Now the base for this model will be a simple Primaris Intercessor. In this case I've got a few from my local game store second hand and after stripping the paint and most of the parts of this body it is ready for a few adjustments and the bulk of those adjustments will be from this stormcast eternal banner bearer dude from the dominion box set to begin with i would need to remove the banner and arm from the stormcast body i started by using my knife to remove the bottom of the pole from the base area before moving on to a saw to remove the arm and banner from the collar area I'm using the saw here because the arm is quite thick and whilst I could do it with a knife it would take a lot more effort and probably snap a blade or two. Once that arm has been removed I could check the fit with the model before taking my clippers to remove the bulk of the Stormcast shoulder pad as I'm planning on using one from the Intercessors kit. With that done I can continue to work on the banner. In the middle of it it has a large face and a scroll with Sigma written on it. Now whilst I could probably leave this and make up some backstory, I figure that the Lions have quite enough on their plate without having the Inquisition asking questions about who this Sigmar guy is and why his face is in the middle of their banner. To fix this issue and reduce the awkward questions, I'm going to mix up some green stuff putty and cover over both the face and the writing on the scroll. This should give me a nice circle in the middle for a transfer once I can find them and a nice blank scroll to write on later too. After mixing together an equal amount of the blue and yellow putty, I could then take this and use the highly sophisticated sculpting tool to squidge it into place over the face and the scroll, taking care to make sure that the very specialised bamboo skewer is nice and damp to keep it from sticking. Once that was done, I had a little of the green stuff left over. Now with this, I'm going to attach a magnet to the base of the model, as my storage boxes have a metal bottom, and this will help keep him from rolling around everywhere or getting squashed into a carry case. Now the shoulder pad I'm going to be using is this one here from the Intercessors I got from the shop. I'm assuming it is from the Sergeant, but it could also be from a random Space Marine kit. Pretty much any shoulder you have will do, but I wanted this one because it was more ornate and lent itself to a chapter hero a little bit better. With the fit on the arm tested out, I could put both the arm and the shoulder aside for the green stuff on the banner to cure a little bit more before I do any more handling to it. Now onto the left hand holding his weapon. From the Stormcast banner bearer, I have this little arm here with a lion head shoulder pad and honestly, this single part gave me the whole idea for this guy several months past when I got the Dominion box. He's just been waiting for Games Workshop to release a melee option for the Ancient. Anyways, it doesn't need much adjustment to fit and a little trimming to the Primaris body to tidy it up leaves me with just needing to stick it in place with a little plastic glue. With that left arm on, it would need some time to set before I could properly fiddle with getting the other arm on, so I decided to take a little relic from the Intercessor's kit and attach it to his waist to give him another little decoration above the standard Space Marine. Now once that left arm is glued on there nice and tightly, I moved to getting the banner in place. To make it fit a little bit better, I snipped off the little pointy bit at the bottom. This could then be brought onto the model with some plastic glue in an appropriate position before adding the shoulder pad and adjusting to suit before the glue has set. I had at this point added the backpack too so I could see where the banner would sit when held. I then attached the head with some glue and positioned it how I felt would look appropriate. At this point however, I realised I was not too happy with the angle of that flag. It actually looked quite silly in my opinion. So to fix this, I snipped it off just below the flag and above the handle with my knife and I'm going to pin it back on at another angle. This pinning joint is done by taking my hobby drill with a 1mm drill bit in it and drilling a hole in both of the parts to be joined. Then a length of 1mm wire can be super glued into place in one side of the joint, trimmed so that it will fit the hole on the other side of the joint and then super glued again before bringing the two pieces together. This here makes a much stronger joint than using plastic glue and it will help prevent the banner from falling off during use. With that done, I'm going to remove the little Stormcast head thing from the top of the banner and using a skull from the Citadel Skulls kit, I'm going to make it look a little bit more Imperial looking. 
After that, the whole model can be left for a little while for the putty to completely set before bringing in a file to flatten those sculpted areas out a little bit more. And that brings the kit bash part of this model to a close. I added some basing material and this line here is ready for a coat of paint. So to begin with, I'm going to need to prime the model and I'm going to be using this Retributor Armor Spray from Games Workshop to make the next steps a little bit easier. The next thing I'm going to do is spray the model with a varnish. In my case, I'm using Munitorum Varnish from Games Workshop as I'm going to do an oil wash over the armor. As the varnish I'm using is a matte finish, the gold will become quite dull, but this is just a base coat and I will be bringing back the shine in a later step. For the oil wash, I'm going to be mixing a burnt umber and a lemon yellow oil paint in roughly equal amounts with some mineral spirits, probably about the same amount as I have paint, to thin it down and turn it into a wash consistency before taking an old paintbrush and slapping it all over the armor of the model. It looks quite messy, but that will be fixed up later and it will give some nice shadows and definition to the armor. It will, however, need quite some time to dry. Once that wash is dry, I can then take a cotton bud dipped in some mineral spirits and wipe off the excess of the wash, leaving it only in the recesses and areas that I want in shadow. Once more, this will need time to dry fully, and once it is, I can give it another blast of spray varnish to seal the wash before moving on to the next step. And speaking of next steps, that one is to bring some shine back to the armor on the edges and ray sections. And the quickest way I've found to do this is with a few layers of dry brushing. To begin with, I'm going to be using some Retributor armor, taking a little on a large brush, straight from the pot and wiping most of it off on some paper towel, making sure to get the paint right into them bristles before brushing all over the armor on the model. Also, the pole for his banner and the hilt of his sword. Next layer, I'm going to be giving a lighter, all over dry brushing of Rune Fang Steel to brighten it up a little bit and make it look a little shinier. Finally, once that one is done, I'll be doing another dry brush, this time with Auric Armor Gold to give the color a little bit more depth. Again, this coat should be lighter than the previous silver as it's not meant to completely overpower the layer beneath. With the gold armor done, I'm going to use this Vallejo Turquoise on his shoulder pads, his helmet, the right knee pad, and the tops of his power pack vents, taking care not to get it on the gold as I do so. I also coated the whole of his banner, as I'm going to use this color as a base for it. Next, once that turquoise is done and dried a little, I'm going to mix in a little bit of Vallejo off-white to the turquoise to lighten it a little, and adding some glaze medium to make a lighter colored glaze to go over the turquoise areas on the armor and give it a bit of highlighting. While that glaze dries, I'm going to move on to the silver parts. I'm going to be using gunmetal gray from Vallejo, I'm using this for the armor seals, the little round thing on his lion's shoulder, the hinges on the banner, the reliquary on his belt, and the blade of his sword. For his Aquila, I'm going to be starting with Vallejo Heavy Charcoal mixed with some cold gray for a base coat, and I'm going to apply it to the whole of the Aquila, again, being careful not to get it on the gold. Once that is dry, I'm going to be moving on to highlighting the Aquila with pure cold gray paint without the charcoal mixed in. Just going on the higher points of the feathers and the skull. Back to the turquoise armor, I'm going to do a rough edge highlight by mixing in a little more of the off-white with the turquoise to make a lighter color to really bring out the edges of some of the more prominent parts of the turquoise areas. You generally want to focus on those parts which are facing upwards as they're more likely to be catching the light. To bring out some of the lines in the armor, especially on the blue armor, I'm going to be using this panel liner from Tamiya. It's an oil based wash pretty much that runs into the lines and darkens them significantly. I'm mostly going to be using it on the various vents around his armor like on his faceplate and chest and to go around the Aquila and other areas that did not get a wash earlier on. Whilst that dries off, I came in with some Vallejo Fresh Blood to the cord on his right shoulder pad. It didn't quite come out the color I'd hoped for, but it's not gold anymore, so it will do. 
Now, unfortunately, at this point, the camera cut off and I didn't realise it, so I'll have to speed through some explanation. So, taking the Retributor armour gold once more, I coloured in the edges of the banner. Whilst that dried, I took some Citadel's Mephiston red and coloured in the handle of the banner pole and of his sword. I also did a base coat of this on his eye lenses, carefully trying not to get the red on the rest of the helm. I also coloured in the gem on the hilt of his sword and the gem on the little round thing on his shoulder pad. With that done, I could come in with an orange, in this case Vallejo Rust, and added a thin line to the eye lens as a highlight. I also dotted the gems too and added some highlights to the red handles. Now the next few steps are me doing the banner and they are a little bit of a mess, but here goes. So I'm going to be using Rakarth Flesh to colour in the scrolly bits coming off the back of the banner. I'm also going to do the scroll in the middle of the banner too with this, but I forgot it at this stage. Once they are done, I can use some Agrax Earthshade and go over the whole of the banner, including the bits I painted afterwards when I realised I missed them. Now with that done, this banner is looking awfully dull. So I'm going to bring back some vibrancy to it, starting with some off-white on the scroll in the middle, which is using the Rakarth Flesh as its base coat. So it comes out a little bit more even, hopefully. White on blue wasn't going to go well. I also decided that this was time for a new brush. That old one was pretty dead and certainly not doing me any favours. After the white is done on there, I'm going to come in again with some turquoise on the banner. This time I'm going to be doing every other one of the sections on it to give it a nice pattern. And I'm also going to be doing the big circle in the middle. And then I will be doing similar on the back. Only here, I'm going to go with the turquoise and the off-white instead of the two shades of turquoise I have on the front. With that done and drying off, it's back to the Auric Armour Gold, and I'm going to be going over all of the gold areas with this to shine it up a little and finish up this banner. For his base, I'm going to be taking some Snakebite Leather Contrast Paint, and after giving it a quick dry brush of grey that I forgot to catch on camera, I'm going to give it an all over coat of the brown contrast. With that done and drying off, I'm going to shade the sword, and I'm going to turn to some Nuln Oil for this. I'm also going to put a little bit on the Aquila, and the handles of his pole and sword. And once that's had some time to dry, I'm going to just gently edge highlight the sword with some Rune Fang Steel on the blade to finish it off. One final step for this model is to give the rim of the base a couple of coats of Abaddon Black. And here we have my finished Primaris Ancient for the Celestial Lions chapter. Now the lions usually have blue, not turquoise, but I've taken liberties because I'm not too fond of the blue and gold colour scheme. It's very similar to the Hammers of Sigma as well, and when you're using Stormcast parts, it's probably best to shy away from the same colours too. Anyways, I had planned this model in my head for quite some time, so it is nice to realise that into an actual character I can use on the tabletop, especially with Games Workshop releasing that nice new model with the same weapon loadout. And I think that's why I put in a little extra effort on his painting than my normal tabletop quality. As always, I hope you enjoyed this kit bash and paint, and any comments are welcome. If you are not subscribed, perhaps consider doing so, and I shall see you in the next one. Stay safe, and have a good one all.